Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Dr. Uzair Ahmed and today's topic is the continuation of jaw relation records. Today this um, presentation is intended for final year BDA students. Today's topic is vertical jaw vertical jaw relations. So basically uh, vertical jaw relation we know at this point that there are three types of jaw relation records the orientation jaw relation the vertical jaw relation and finally the horizontal jaw relations in um, vertical dimension or the vertical jaw relation record we have uh, different uh, mechanisms or you can say different methods to record the vertical dimension um, total of five different uh, concepts are used in recording the vertical dimension relationships first one is the facial measurements after the patient is asked to swallow and relax his or her jaw this is called the um, physiological rest position and at that position the vertical uh, really uh, vertical measurements are taken and then they are uh, correlated clinically and second one is the speech or uh, third one is the tactile sensations and then the measurement of anatomical landmarks and then the facial expressions or the aesthetics of the patient basically um, we should know that the reason behind having uh, different methods in recording vertical relations are because not no one method is completely uh, accurate so uh, a clinician is required to keep in his or her mind all of these different methods during jaw relation records and uh, basically in clinical settings we have to take help from all of these methods maybe some in some patients the technique of speech uh, method would be useful or in some patients the measurement of anatomical landmarks can be very useful but it varies from patient to patient so basically the physiological rest position is a concept in which patient is asked to sit upright and comfortable eyes looking straight ahead then here the patient is asked to swallow and relax the uh, relaxes or her jaws now how this is um, proceeded is that the patient is asked to sit upright without having a back support and have a comfortable setting and eyes looking straight ahead then maxillary occlusal rims are inserted two points of reference are recorded and then the patient is asked to wipe his lips with his tongue to swallow and to drop his shoulders in a rest position and then the two the two points that we have uh, recorded for the reference are measured and then that measurement is called the vertical dimension of rest or rest vertical dimension another one is the uh, method is the tactile sensation in which the patient is instructed to stand straight and open the jaws wide until strain is felt in the muscles when the opening becomes uncomfortable, ask him to close slowly until the jaws reach a comfortable relaxed position. Measure the distance and compare it. Basically, these are all methods to achieve a physiological rest position, which is the normal position when the any of us, even any of the patient or any of us are resting. The jaws are slightly apart. The teeth are not close together they are slightly apart and that is basically the rest vertical dimension and the vertical dimension of occlusion is two to three millimeter less than that of vertical dimension of rest so if you measure the vertical dimension of rest in a patient in any patient then the vertical dimension of occlusion can be easily measured by subtracting two or three millimeters from the rest vertical dimension and this difference of two to three millimeters between the rest vertical dimension and occlusal vertical dimension is called freeway space. In 
recording of speech what we do is in the rims are already inserted and then either of the two methods is achieved first is to ask the patient to repeatedly pronounce the letter m a certain number of times then distance is measured immediately after the patient stops second method is to keep talking to the patient and measure the distance immediately after the patient stops talking anatomical landmarks is also a method in which distance between the pupil of the eye and rima oris rima oris is corner of the mouth and the distance between anterior nasal spine and the lower border of mandible is measured using willis guide if both the distances are equal jaws are considered at rest this is called a willis guide these two measurements are recorded in facial expression patient's jaw will be in rest position when he is relaxed skin around the eyes and chin should be relaxed nostrils are relaxed and breathing is unobstructed upper and lower lips have slight contact in one plane so determining the methods of vertical dimension of occlusion we have mechanical methods which include ridge relations distance from incisive papilla to mandibular incisors parallelism of ridges also we have pre extraction records if the patient provides them to you in the form of profile photographs profile silhouettes radiography articulated casts and facial measurements or the measurement from previous dentures can also be a useful guide in a physiological methods we have back occlusal rims physiological rest position that we have discussed before of also we have aesthetics of the overall aesthetics of the patient because we know that um, uh, if the vertical dimension is too high or too low it affects it readily affects the aesthetics of the patient as well swallowing threshold tactile sense or neuromuscular perception and patient's perception of comfort the ridge relations they are defined as positional relationship of the mandible ridge to the maxillary ridge distance from the incisive papilla to the mandibular incisors is also uh, can also be recorded this distance from the incisal edges of lower anterior teeth average is approximately 4 mm in natural dentition the incisal edges of maxillary central incisors are an average of 6 mm below the incisive papilla based on this value vertical dimension of occlusion can be calculated parallelism of ridges basically it was suggested that correct vertical dimension of occlusion is at a point where the jaws are parallel with a 5 degree opening in the posterior region in if the former dentures previous dentures are available to you and the patient tries it in the mouth and it appears okay the vertical dimension appears uh, adequate to you then the dentures are taken out and the bullies gauge is used to measure the distance between the border of the maxillary mandibular denture when the dentures are in occlusion this measurement is used to determine the vertical dimension of occlusion this is how this procedure is taken in profile radiographs we have uh, ones with teeth in occlusion these are compared with those made with occlusal rims in position profile radiographs are basically they can be time consuming image distortion and radiation hazards profile photographs taken in maximum occlusion of teeth the photograph should be enlarged to the actual size of the patient the distance between the two anatomical landmarks is then compared with that of patient to avoid errors in facial measurements tattoo points are marked on tip of the nose and base of the chin the vertical dimension between the anatomical landmarks is then compared with that of patient to avoid errors willis gauge is also used to measure facial dimension one arm contacts the base of the nose and the other arm contacts the base of the chin these were some of the mechanical methods now the physiological methods we have a very 
popular method of which is called Nesvanger's method in which two markings are made one on the upper lip below the nasal septum and the other on the chin the patient is told to swallow and relax this is the physiological rest position the distance between the marks is measured the occlusal rims are adjusted until the distance between the marks is 2 to 3 2 to 4 mm less during occlusion the dentist asks the patient to speak certain words and then makes certain observations of the relationship of occlusal rims to each other and to the lips the patient repeats the M sound when the lip just touches ask the patient to hold the jaw still the distance between tip of the nose and chin is measured the occlusal rims are adjusted and again measured the second measurement should be 2 to 4 mm less than the first measurement which is also called as freeway space also there are ch s and j sounds they should be one millimeter space when between the occlusal rims in the anterior region at correct vertical dimension using 33 when repeating this word with should be enough space for the tip of the tongue to protrude between the anterior teeth so these are some of the uh, ways that speaking or speech can be a help in determining the vertical dimension silver man's closest speaking space is basically a space between the incisors at correct vertical dimension of occlusion when patient pronounces words containing s the closest speaking space measures vertical dimension when the mandible and muscles involved are in physiologic function of speech in the method of aesthetics in normal relaxed position the lips are even anteroposteriorly and in slight contact if the face appears strained the vertical height may be more if the corners of the mouth droop making the chin appear too close to the nose the vertical dimension may be too less another one is swallowing threshold a technique which is based on the fact that when a person swallows the teeth comes together with a very light contact at the beginning of the swallowing cycle if the occlusal rims do not come into contact during swallowing then the vertical dimension is less cones of soft wax having excessive height are placed on the lower base and salivation is stimulated and the patient is instructed to swallow the repeated swallowing reduces the height of the wax to the occlusal vertical dimension the patient's tactile sense is used as a guide to the determination of the correct vertical dimension using a central bearing plate attached to mandibular occlusal rim and central bearing screw attached to maxillary occlusal rim vertical dimension is increased too high then in progressive steps the screw is adjusted to add downwards until the patient signifies overclosure the procedure is then reversed until the patient signifies that it's just right uh, so it is uh, also a method a biometer which stated that maximum biting force occurs at vertical dimension of occlusion a device that measures the biting force is attached to the mandibular record base and a metal plate to maxillary a screw is turned to adjust the vertical relation the maximum power point on the gauge indicates the correct vertical dimension these are some of the um, some of these techniques have been obsolete also Electromyography rest position can be determined according to the minimal activity of muscles of mas mastication so prescribing guidelines so this uh, finishes the vertical jaw relation the next um, the presentation inshallah will be on the horizontal jaw relations thank you so much